Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. You might have seen the thumbnail. Yes, in this video, I will share how I saved 6,000 US dollars for one of my clients with a simple architectural change. This video is going to be super insightful and one of its kind. So make sure you watch this video till the end. Let's get started. First things first, what exactly is this all about? So some of you already know that I do freelancing as well and 90% of the clients that I get are actually from LinkedIn. And last year, a Spain-based startup reached out to me on LinkedIn asking if I can perform a quick architectural review of their DevOps implementation. So basically, this startup had DevOps implemented by some other vendors. But being a startup, when they compare their cloud billings on the dev or UAT environment, and they compare it with other companies, they figured out that their cloud billings are way higher. So they wanted some expert in the field of DevOps to perform architectural review and suggest the best practices or in general areas of improvement. Obviously, cloud cost optimization is one of my favorite areas. So I said, I will take up this task. And we both agreed, that is the company and me, we both agreed for one day quick architectural review. That was the assignment. And for that, they provided me with the documentation. They provided me with design diagrams. Note that that is only related to the UAT. They did not provide the design or architecture or anything related to their prod production. Only thing that they are provided are related to the dev or UAT environment. So they provided me with the documentation, architectural design diagrams. Along with that, they also provided me with a DevOps engineer for assistance. A lot of times things are missed in the documentation or in the design diagram. So when you come up with these kind of assignments, usually companies provide with a DevOps engineer so that they can assist you with anything that is missing in the talks. And I went through their version control system. I went through their branching strategy, Kubernetes implementation, CI, CD, everything that is required. And to be honest, most of the things actually looked good. However, when it comes to CI, CD implementation on this lower environment, I figured out that as per the requirements that they have, their CI CD pipeline is overwhelming. That is, the CI CD pipeline that they have used in the lower environment is good according to the market standard. It is the ideal CI CD pipeline, but it is not required for their use case or for the requirements that they have. They say, right? The ideal setup or the best setup that is available in the market might not be ideal for your company. Or sometimes the setup that is not very ideal or sometimes the setup that is not the best might work for your company and it might save a lot of money for your company. Same thing happened in this case. Then I explained the requirement, existing CICD design and what I suggested, you will understand better. So let's start with requirement first. That is, what was their requirement for the UAT or the dev environment? First thing is, the dev environment that they have was used by the, or it was created for the developers. And a point to note here, on the dev environment, they had EKS cluster with pretty good configuration. They had three node or four node EKS cluster where they had control plane that is managed by AWS, 
and they had T2X large, I guess, the compute instance or the worker nodes. And this EKS cluster, nobody has access to it. That is, developers don't log into this EKS cluster, but it is used so that whenever developer creates a commit or whenever developer has a new change, the change is deployed onto the EKS cluster or the new version of the application is deployed onto the EKS cluster and integration tests or the regression or the functional tests that are written by the QE instance are executed on this EKS cluster. This is very important point. So EKS cluster that they have, one new version of application on every deployment on every commit is deployed onto this EKS cluster. And second, the integration tests that are provided by the QE engineers are executed on this EKS cluster, right? So this was the only requirement. For that, people who have implemented CI-CD pipeline, what they have done, so they have created this CI-CD pipeline where every time there is a pull request, this company is using GitHub Enterprise. So every time a pull request is created, the GitHub actions is triggered where as part of the GitHub Enterprise, they have a lot of credits when it comes to GitHub runners. So a GitHub runner is invoked by the GitHub actions where on the GitHub runner, the first stage that is triggered is unit testing, then static code analysis, then build of binary. Then this binary is pushed to artifactory like Nexus or JFrog. And once this is done, Docker image is created. Then Docker image is scanned. Then the Docker image is pushed to registry where they were using ECR. And once this is done, Helm chart. So they were using Helm charts. So the values.yaml of Helm chart is updated with the newly created Docker image. So this is as part of the CI using GitHub workflows. Then they also had CD part for which they were using Flux CD, where Flux CD continuously monitors this Helm chart. When the values.yaml is updated for the Helm chart, Flux CD deploys this new image onto the EKS cluster, right? This EKS cluster I was talking about. And integration tests are run on the EKS cluster. So integration tests usually run for 15 minutes or something, right? And for that reason, they had this EKS cluster because lot of developer creates the pull request and every time a developer creates a pull request, this entire workflow is triggered. Now, when you look at it for the first time, you will definitely say this is ideal CI CD pipeline because it check marks everything that is required for DevSecOps and it also use the GitOps principle. So overall, you feel that this CI CD pipeline is actually very good, but a very good architectural design means that it is good for the requirements. You don't always have to create a ideal or complex architecture, even when your requirements are very basic. In this case, the requirement is very basic because everything is automated. Nobody is logging into this EKS cluster. Nobody is running any manual tests on this EKS cluster. QE has a different environment, right? QE has a QE environment and they have a different EKS cluster, they have a different CI CD pipeline. So because nobody is logging into this EKS cluster, why should it run all the time? Right? You might say, but Abhishek, if I use Carpenter, uh, you know, every time a developer creates a pull request, Carpenter cannot respond to the changes and EKS cluster cannot be scaled up and scaled down immediately. I totally agree with it. But the point is, why do you even need a EKS cluster? Why not 
a local Kubernetes cluster. And this is the change that I have implemented. Now, let me explain the change that I have implemented in the same page so that you can understand better. Now, whenever a developer creates a pull request, we will use the same GitHub enterprise, the runner that is provided by the GitHub enterprise, where the stages are quite similar. There is UT environment, sorry, uh, unit testing that is done, then static code analysis, then the binary creation, then the binary is pushed to the artifactory, then Docker image is created, Docker image is scanned, Docker image is pushed to ECR, and then the Helm values.yaml is updated with the new image. After this, I suggested a significant architectural change that is in terms of impact. The change is very simple, but it in terms of impact, it is very significant because I completely removed EKS cluster and I suggested them to use a local Kubernetes cluster that is on this GitHub runner. So GitHub runner is actually a virtual machine, right? So on the same GitHub runner, which is triggered as part of the GitHub CI workflow, I asked them to install K3S. So K3S is installed on the same GitHub runner and Helm, so basically they can write a shell script where Helm deploys the new version on K3S. And then integration tests are run on the K3S. So what I have done here, completely eliminated EKS, completely eliminated Flux CD and replaced it with K3S cluster on the GitHub runner. Because everything is automatic, once the runner is done with its job, that is CICD pipeline is passed or failed, the K3S cluster along with the runner are terminated. So GitHub will only cost you for the time the runner is active. Important point to note, when you are using GitHub Enterprise, which most of the companies use, like companies usually don't use uh, GitHub, the one that is available for free, so they go for GitHub Enterprise where they are already paying for GitHub and as a complimentary, GitHub provides 5,000 plus minutes of free GitHub runner. And it also depends on negotiation where people get more minutes of free GitHub runner as well. So we are making complete use of the GitHub runner, efficient use of the GitHub runner and installing K3S as part of the GitHub runner and executing the integration tests on it. So this is a simple change which makes significant impact. Abhishek, but in which cases this does not work? Like why can't every company do this? So this change or this design that I have suggested here does not work. One, when the dev environment has EKS cluster where developers log into the EKS cluster and run some custom checks. Or in the same dev environment, QE executes some tests on the EKS cluster. Usually dev environment is for dev. So, you know, a lot of companies, what they do is developers log into the EKS cluster and they run some custom checks. That is, they run a maybe a sandbox related testing or they run some, uh, you know, tests that are not covered in the integration test or they check, perform some checks on the API, they run some manual workflows. If a company has automated all of these, only in the dev environment, you know, in staging environment, in QE environment, pre-production environment, this pipeline is not recommended because when it comes to QE environment, QE should perform performance testing, load testing, penetration testing, where they need this Kubernetes cluster. If they install K3S on the runner, once the CICD is done, this is deleted. So this does not work for them. They need a EKS cluster or any Kubernetes cluster that is always available. So this architecture is only suggested for the dev environments and where everything is automated. You don't have 
any manual intervention to the Kubernetes cluster. I hope you understood the design that I have suggested and you know, I hope you found it insightful because you can also go back and implement it in your companies. If in your company, the automated tests are not available. So you can push QE or you can push your management towards moving to the microservice architecture and making the services as small as possible where writing integration tests are easy. If you have any questions related to this, let me know in the comment section. I'm more than happy. And if you want a demo of this CICD pipeline, now this is a very rare CICD pipeline, right? Usually that you see on the internet are these CICD pipelines where you have a ideal CI, where you have ideal CD. But if you want to learn something like this, let me know in the comment section. Just comment demo where I will create a new video. It will take time because I have to also write the integration test. I have to create a sample application and I have to build this entire CICD. But I can do it if a lot of you feel it is useful. Thank you so much for watching today's video. See you all in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.